Hey guys, what is going on? It's Don here from Nova Spirit Tech and welcome back to the channel. And today we are going to be checking out the Terra Master F5221 NAS. So let's get started. So I do want to thank Terra Master for sending this over to me for review. This is the F52215 Bay NAS and everything we talk about will be linked down in the description below as well as their promo that's coming out for Black Friday and Cyber Monday. So you will get a discount on this device and again I'll leave everything linked down in the description below. Now this is the second Terra Master F5221 device I actually own. The first one I purchased for a small business that I work with. It's been out for quite some time already. I think I purchased the original one that I got. Uh, back in 2000 end of 18 or beginning of 19 I, right around that area but yes this is a very suitable device especially for the price point that you're targeting now there are a couple of big names in the industry you might already know which is either QNAP or Synology before that there was smaller ones like Western Digital Buffalo and a few other handfuls I can't remember off the top of my hand but Terra Master is still pretty new to the scene but how they built their business and how they got up to this point is surprisingly fast. Now, Synology and QNAP has been around for quite some time and they've been battling it for the longest time to be the top. And look, they, they are. They are really good NASs out there. But the amount of time that they took to get to where they are versus this guy getting to where it is right now, the time span on this guy was a lot shorter. What I mean is back in the day when QNAP or when Synology first came out and had the technology that they were putting into these devices back in the day, they would have grew even faster. Terra Master seems to be taking a lot of practices from these two devices and adding it into their own operating system, into the device build and everything. Now, as far as the build quality goes on this guy compared to the Synology or the QNAP of similar size, uh, it is much smaller footprint, but less to be desired about. It is still using a lot of plastic components, uh, especially the front trim, the rear trim, uh, the caddies itself but otherwise it feels very sturdy. Now taking a look at these trays, which I do already have these populated with hard drive itself for this one, it is using a much sturdier plastic than it used to use back in the day, but it is much better in build quality than it was. And it's comparable to a Synology because Synology uses similar plastic, but it still uses screws to install the hard drive. As far as the front panel goes, you do have the five bay, you have the LEDs for each hard drive and also the power button on the bottom. Now in the back, you have the HDMI, two USB ports, which is USB three, and two ethernet ports which are gigabit LAN. And then you've got the power barrel on the bottom with two, I think these are 50 millimeter fans. And this thing runs very, very quiet, especially with these fans on, I barely hear it. Now for the internals for this guy, it is running an Intel J3355, clock speed of 2.0 and boost up to 2.5 with two gigabytes of built-in RAM and expandable slots so you could actually add more RAM to this guy. Now on their website, they say this is only expandable up to four gigs of RAM, which is not true because on this same version that I have on the other client that I got, I was able to upgrade it up to 10 gigs of RAM, which means I slapped in eight gigs of RAM and the onboard two gigs of RAM and it ran perfectly fine. And running the motherboard script on the SM BIOS, this CPU and this motherboard should be able to support up to 16. But obviously you won't be able to install that because it's only got one slot. If you are planning to use this for more than its intended purpose of a NAS, like if you plan to install Nixcloud or some other stuff, any types of services, I would recommend upgrading the RAM because the two gigs of RAM is practically taken up by the host itself. Now, as far as upgrading this guy, it is pretty simple. You got six screws in the back. So three here, three here. So these screws come out and then the bottom has four screws that allows the aluminum case to be slid off. Once you slide out the back, pop off the fans, like so. Slide off the aluminum case. This will reveal the RAM slot that you can install, which is DDR3. And at this point, DDR3 is very affordable. So if you are planning to upgrade, it's not gonna be that much of a cost to upgrade this to 10 gigs of RAM total. I do like the fact that it does have a HDMI because I actually broke this one by accident. Well, I didn't break it. What happened was, I installed hard drives in here that had a preloaded operating system and it was trying to boot off the operating system and I could not get this to work 
until I actually hooked it up to a monitor and said and saw that the BIOS was trying to boot into the first hard drive, which I was able to fix by you know selecting the boot process. Furthermore, the built-in operating system is running TOS 4.2. I got the latest update for this, so it is running 4.2. It is similar to Synology and QNAP's desktop where you can navigate and run applications inside like file managers, dockers, virtual machines, stuff like that. On first boot, you could see on the right hand side that it is using almost one gig of RAM just powering it on. So like I said, upgrade the RAM if you are planning to use this a little bit more than what your intended purpose is. You could install Docker on here, you could install Pertainer, you could install a virtual machine like VirtualBox on here. So this thing is actually a pretty good mini server on top of the NAS if you wanted to run it that way. In conclusion, this machine that I've actually been using for about two years, not this particular one, but the one I've installed, I have not been turned off for two years. It's very reliable. I never had any issues with the hard drive. It stays ultra quiet. I do have to go in and check on it for, from time to time to make sure the operating system is updated, but that is about it. I run it solely as a NAS at the small office over there, and I do have one or two small dockers just to monitor bandwidth and stuff like that. But other than that, it runs perfectly fine. And one thing I do highly recommend is upgrading the RAM. Now in comparison, if you are comparing this to another five bay NAS like the QNAP or Synology, you will be looking at almost double the price point for something similar. Even though you are getting a stronger CPU and more RAM for the Synology package, um, this is more than suffice for a home setup or a small business or small office setup. Again, it really depends on what you are using this guy for. If you are just solely using this for data storage, NAS, and maybe one or two services, Yes, you, it, it totally can handle that with the two cores and the two gigs of RAM. Upgrading the RAM allows you to run a little bit more services if you are looking for that purpose, if you're planning to install something like Nextcloud or torrenting services or whatever it is, I would recommend upgrading the RAM. Otherwise, this guy runs pretty flawless. And if you guys did pick this up and not using TOS 4.0, make sure you do upgrade to 4.0 because on the later operating systems, it supports the better FS, which means it allows for snapshotting and backups. It's just a lot better file system. So on the TOS 4.0 plus, you will get those features as well. Anyway, that is it for me guys. If you have any questions about this NAS, I will try to answer them as best as I can because I've been using it for some time. If you have, if you are new to this channel, consider subscribing and also hitting that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is gonna be out. And as I say, my nerd cave, hack till it hurts.